Welcome to this month's episode of Chamber TV. Special guest Barbara Haber will talk with us about FutureLink and the Business Roundtable for Education. Terry O'Malley will also join us for an update on the Healthy Frederick Initiative. Season 2 continues with Episode 18, hosted by John Michael Bailey and Jessica Hibbard. <laughs> Welcome to Episode 18, everybody. I'm Jessica Hibbard, here with John Michael Bailey. Welcome. Great to have you. Welcome here. It's good to have you. We're yeah. excited. I'm excited. Go ahead. This is John's excited face. Okay, if you're watching online, you've already found our YouTube channel. You can join in the conversation on Twitter by using the Chamber TV hashtag. We are also posting on our Tumblr blog. You can see photos, videos, and other updates online at frederickchamber.tv. Let's talk about Positively Frederick, what? shall we? Uh, this is the Chambers Community blog. Um, anyone can submit a story about something good that happened to them, around them, because of them, between them, in <laughs> Frederick County. Frederick County, that's the key. That's the key. Well, uh, this is our post for this month. Experient, an event management company here in Frederick, recently organized a Pride Week, and they encouraged their employees to support local nonprofits. The employees donated nearly 100 items to the Frederick County Animal Control and Adoption Center. Not oh, too shabby. Not bad. You can see a photo of the doma donations and learn more online at PositivelyFrederick.org. Uh, again, if something good has happened to you in Frederick County, write a sentence or snap a picture and send it to us uh, so we can post it on PositivelyFrederick.org. That, that would be terrific. Well, it's time again for a Frederick Factoid. It's my favorite part. John's favorite. For those of you who like to impress your friends at networking events with local tidbits. Frederick has been a tree city for more than 30 years, and there are some, ma some amazing trees throughout the county, as you've probably noticed. Yes, there's a famous ginkgo tree in downtown Frederick on 2nd Street. In 1983, the USDA certified this particular ginkgo as the largest and oldest of its kind in the United States. It's, cool. Yeah, it was planted in 1801, and it's almost 100 feet tall. It's pretty impressive, and it's a very, very smart tree. Smart? Ginkgo. Go Ginko. ahead. Oh, Nothing. right, because it takes the brain ginkgo yeah. supplements. <laughs> right. Well, it it's, can't all be gems. It's but. older than the chamber, so that alone is enough to impress me. Well, that's this month's Factoid. We'll be back in just a moment with our first special guest. Thank you for tuning in to episode 18 of Chamber TV. Refreshments for our live studio audience were provided by Taste of Asia Hibachi, a new restaurant at Clemson Corner in Frederick. All right, welcome back. The uh, fifth annual FutureLink conference, Career Conference is coming up later this month. The Chamber's Business Roundtable program will host more than 400 high school sophomores. Yes. Our first special guest is Barbara Haber, coordinator for the Frederick County Business Roundtable for Education and the woman making it all happen. Please welcome Barbara. Good morning. Thank you. Oh. Snuggle Slide in. Snuggle. <laughs> Uh, I've spoken at FutureLink a couple years. Uh, it's a great event. Um, it sounds like it's going to be even more amazing this year, but uh, tell us a little bit about what happens at the conference itself. Sure. It's a great opportunity for high school students. Over 400 students this year will be attending FCC at FCC, and it's um, they can enroll in up to three sessions, and they are STEM-related, science, technology, engineering, and math. And it gives them the opportunity to see what's out there, what's available, uh, what career paths they might want to follow. And in, in return, it also gives all of our business leaders, because they are the presenters, and we have 30 business leaders today um, that are signed up to be presenters, and it gives them the opportunity to show the students what their businesses have to offer and how they can, what, what they need to do, what skills they need in order to um, follow their career path. So it's really a win-win situation for both, and it, it's growing every year. We're very excited. Awesome. Definitely. Well, there are a lot of, as you mentioned, local organizations supporting this conference as presenters, as sponsors. Why is this so important to the business community? Good question, and I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> um, studies are being done all the time on what the job of the future will look like, and one recent study that really caught my eye showed that between 2008 and 2018, STEM-related jobs will have increased by 17%. 
So there's obviously a huge need for STEM-related um, people who have the skill sets and who are interested in, in what there is to offer in those fields. So it's so important for us as business leaders and as educators to, to help the high school students be prepared and, and help them learn what they need to know, what skill sets they need. Um, instead of just guessing, they, go, they may go away to college, they may get a job right after high school that they do or don't like, um, they may go to a two-year college, but this just gives them an opportunity to really know beforehand what's out there and what's available. So it's, it's a definite need and it's something that our community all needs to be involved in. Sure, because if those jobs are there, then businesses really need people who are qualified right. to fill those jobs. Right. Awesome. I enjoyed scaring the students about my industry. No, I'm just kidding. It was great. It was great. <laughs> um, in addition to FutureLink uh, and an internship program for students, the Business Roundtable uh, also coordinates externships for teachers. Uh, what are externships and uh, what, what type of impact do they have on the curriculum? It's really a very unique opportunity for teachers. Um, they come and they spend their time working in a business. They have actual job responsibilities. They come to work every day just as though they were a student intern. And it helps them learn exactly what it's all about. A lot of them have been out of the workforce for quite a while. They've been teaching, and they haven't been involved in local businesses. So this gives them the opportunity to see what's really going on in the business world. And a recent success story involved uh, science teachers who went and worked for one of our major local companies and worked side-by-side -side during the summer with scientists. And they were so impressed and so inspired by what they saw that they ended up going back and changing their curriculum because they realized that there were some skill sets that they were not helping the students with that they needed in order to be successful. So it's really a great, a great program. Awesome. It's, it's almost uh, an absolute necessity Absolutely. To, to do that for, for teachers, yeah. I think. Right. Yeah, so that's great. And I think it's important to mention, too, that the teachers are paid and student Absolutely. interns are paid, so we need businesses who can sponsor interns and externs so if you're interested Give contact me barb yeah okay well thank you barb we you're appreciate quite welcome. it thank you now you can push me away <laughs> <laughs>
chronic disease management is is a bigger, bigger part of healthcare because we have an aging workforce. Mm. And last year we spent about eight hundred billion dollars in the country on wow. treating the top six causes of chronic diseases. And in addition to that, another six hundred billion was spent on those same diseases for absenteeism and presenteeism, which is sort of the people show up, the lights are on, but nobody's home mm -hmm. because they're working, worrying about something. And as we look at our, our workforce, just some, some, some facts for you, is that about 60% of our employees don't exercise enough. That's probably mm -hmm. not a surprise. Mm -hmm. But 50% of our employees actually have high cholesterol. <laughs> about 27% of our employees have cardiac disease. 25% of our employees are at least 20% overweight, and about 24% of our employees have high blood pressure. Wow. So working on preventing the causes of health care are, are critical to our future. I feel better. Wow, yeah. Glad to cheer you up. Scary. <laughs> All right, well, it's not unusual to hear about private fitness rooms and other perks at large companies. Small and medium-sized businesses can't usually afford to do things like that. But what can smaller companies do to encourage their employees to be more healthy? Well, there's a lot of things that small and mid-sized employers can do. First, most of those that have health insurance plans, even though they're community rated, mm -hmm. their plans have wellness programs okay. that they sponsor. Um, encouraging people to get preventive health visits, mm -hmm. um, smoking cessation, um, exercise, diet programs, biggest losers, getting people to far park a little bit further away from the office and walk in, climbing the stairs instead of taking the elevator. There's a tremendous number of things that people can do, but it all starts with leadership. People mm -hmm. take their key from the leaders of the company, mm -hmm. and so it's really about setting the tone and the culture for wellness in the community. Yeah, certainly. Well, there's a healthy business forum scheduled for June 29th. Uh, tell us about the event and what local businesses can expect to learn. Sure, it's going to be hosted at Hood College from 8 to 11:30. Um, it's co-sponsored by the chamber here in Frederick County as well as Washington County, um, and uh, and. Um, um, Carroll County, thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's also sponsored by the three health departments from those communities, as well as Frederick Memorial Hospital and, and Meritus Health. Mm. And it's going to be focused on something that a lot of small businesses don't know about, but that's the impact that health care reform is going to have on small businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, also gonna have, we're also going to yeah. have three small businesses from each of the counties that will be presenting, telling us about the programs that they've implemented as small businesses, and then there'll be a question and answer program and roundtables for people to ask their questions about how they can create a healthy work environment at their facility. Wow. Awesome. Sounds like a great program. It does sound terrific. We're going to make information about that forum available on the Chamber website, so look for that, and we'll certainly link it from the Chamber TV page as well. Thank you, Terry. Great to have you. You're welcome. <laughs> So you got my workout pushing chairs at Chamber TV. What was that called? Presenteeism? Presenteeism. Lights are on, nobody's home? Yep. yep. Joe knows about that. <laughs> As always, there's a lot going on at the Chamber. Make sure you check out the calendar on our website at frederickchamber.org to see all of the upcoming events. We've posted links to all the topics we discussed today on our website, frederickchamber.tv. Thank you for tuning in to our 18th episode. Next month, we'll take the show on the road with our summer tour, uh, so stay tuned for details. A lucky member of our studio audience will be selected for today's prize, which is a ticket to our Generation Connect event at Linganore Wine Cellars on June 26th. Yes. Ooh. This month's show is made possible by the following volunteers and donors. Sean Morrissey is our announcer. Matt Doyle is our guest producer. Mike Coop Cooper <laughs> is our guest production assistant. Catering for our live studio audience was provided by Taste of Asia Hibachi. Give them a hand. <laughs> and give yourselves a hand. Thanks to everyone who's here with us today, and thank you for tuning in. Join us in the live studio audience when we record our next episode, Friday, June 15th at 1 o'clock. We'll be right here in the chamber studio, and you're welcome to join us. Between now and then, we'll see you around town and online at frederickchamber.tv. <laughs>